everybody. I hope you're having a great day today. This video study for Search the Scriptures, study number 7 in Leviticus, chapter number 11, uh, is a day late. Sorry about that. But uh, yesterday I had the off awesome privilege of taking 13 kids to camp, to church camp, uh, from the Against the Grain Student Ministries here at our church. So I couldn't get to this yesterday, so let's get right into it today. Study number seven in the book of Leviticus, and it covers chapter number 11. If you want to get your Bible out and look to chapter number 11 in Leviticus. Let's look at the two questions that uh, we are being asked to answer in this study. Number one, what would, the distinction, what would the distinction between clean and unclean food teach Israel about God and his worship? particularly looking at verses 44 and 45, consider the great changes in their habits that the coming of God, uh, that the coming of God to dwell among them would bring about. And Peter, uh, 1 Peter 1, 14 through 16, and Ephesians 4, 22 through 24 may have something to uh, speak to us about that. Question number two, how did our Lord show that such distinctions are not binding and what constitutes defilement in God's sight. Well, let's look at Leviticus chapter number 11 uh, in your Bibles. If you don't have a Bible there with you, it is on the screen here. And we will go ahead and read this uh, chapter together concerning clean and unclean food. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Say to the Israelites, of all the animals that live on land, there are, are the ones that you these are the ones that you may eat you may eat any animal that has a split hoof completely divided and that chews the cud there are some that only chew the cud or only have a split hoof but you must not eat them for example he gives the camel though it chews the cud does not have a split hoof it is ceremonially unclean for you the coney, that's a type of hot dog that we eat here in Indiana. Chili sauce, and onions, and delicious. Uh, but he's not talking about that. He's talking about a particular kind of rock badger that lived in that area of the world. And the coney, or that rock badger, though it chews the cud, does not have a split hoof. So it's unclean for you. The rabbit, though it chews the cud, does not have a split hoof. It is unclean for you. And the pig, though it has a split hoof, completely divided, does not chew the cud. It is unclean. That's why Jews don't eat pork. You must not eat their meat or touch their carcasses. They are unclean for you. That just should remind us of the story of the prodigal son. He was feeding someone's pigs. I mean, it got that bad that he was living in a state of complete uncleanliness. Verse 9, of all the creatures living in the water of the sea and the streams, you may eat any that have fins and scales. But all creatures in the seas or streams that do not have fins and scales, whether among the swarming things or among all other living creatures in the water, you are to detest. For example, lobster and crab legs and shrimp, which I do not find detestable at all. Uh, and since you are to detest them, you must not eat their meat, and you must detest their carcasses. Anything living in the water that does not have fins and scales is to be detestable to you. A dolphin doesn't have scales. It has fins, but not scales. Same with whales and other creatures. An octopus, for example, as well. Verse 13, these are the birds that you are to detest and not eat because they are detestable. The eagle, the vulture, the black vulture, the red kite, and any kind of black kite, and any kind of raven, the horned owl, the screech owl, the gull, any kind of hawk, the little owl, the, the cormorant, the great owl, the white owl, the desert owl, the osprey, the stork, any kind of heron, the, the, the hoopoe, and the bat. Verse 20, all flying insects that walk on all fours are to be detestable to you. I'm for that. Uh, there are, however, some winged creatures that walk on all fours that you may eat. Those that have jointed legs for hopping on the ground. 
John the Baptist ate locusts, or grasshoppers. Of these you may eat any kind of locust, kitty did, cricket, or grasshopper, but all other winged creatures that have four legs you are to detest. You who make yourself unclean by these, whoever touches their carcasses, in verse 24, will be unclean until evening. Whoever picks up one of their carcasses must wash his clothes, and he will be clean, unclean until evening. Every animal has a split hoof, not completely divided, or that does not chew the cud, is unclean for you. Whoever touches the carcasses of any of them will be unclean. Of all the animals that walk on all fours, those that walk on their paws are unclean for you. Whoever touches their carcasses will be unclean till evening, and anyone who picks up their carcasses must wash his clothes, and he will be unclean till evening. They are unclean for you. Verse 29. Of all the animals that move about on the ground, these are unclean for you. The weasel, the rat, any kind of lizard, the gecko, the monitor lizard. I don't think that means you can't have gecko insurance. Anyway, the monitor lizard, the wall lizard, the skink, and the chameleon. Of all those that move along the ground, these are unclean for you. Whoever touches them when they are dead will be unclean till evening. And one, when one of them dies and falls on something, that article, whatever its use, will be unclean, whether it is made of wool, cloth, hide, or sackcloth. Put it in water, it will be unclean till evening, and then it will be clean. If one of them falls into a clay pot, one of these lizards, uh, or rats, that falls into a clay pot, everything in it will be unclean, and you must break the pot. Any food that could be eaten but has water on it, for such as a pot is unclean and any liquid that could be drunk from it is unclean. Anything that one of their carcasses falls on becomes unclean. An oven or cooking pot must be broken up. So keep the lizards away from your oven. Uh, they are unclean and you are to, tar to regard them as unclean. A spring, however, or a cistern for collecting water remains clean. But anyone who touches one of these carcasses is unclean. If a carcass falls on any seeds that are to be planted, they remain clean. But if water has been put on the seed and a carcass falls on it, it is unclean for you. Verse 39, if an animal that you are allowed to eat dies, anyone who touches the carcass will be unclean till evening, and anyone who eats some of the carcass must wash his clothes, and he will be unclean till evening. Anyone who picks up the carcass must wash his clothes, and he will be unclean till evening. Every creature that moves about on the ground is detestable. It is not to be eaten. You are not to eat any creature that moves about on the ground, whether it moves on its belly or walks on all fours or on many feet. It is detestable. Do not defile yourselves by any of these creatures. Do not make yourselves unclean by means of them or be made unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves and be holy, because I am holy. Do not make yourselves unclean by any creature that moves about on the ground. I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore be holy, because I am holy. These are the regulations concerning animals, birds, every living thing that moves in the water, and every creature that moves about on the ground. You must distinguish between the unclean and the clean between living creatures that may be eaten and those that may not be eaten. Very interesting. Leviticus seven, study 7, Leviticus chapter 11. First question, what would the distinction between clean and unclean food teach Israel about God and his worship? You see, this really may not be about our diets. Uh, consider the great changes in their habits that the coming of God to dwell among them brought about. Well, these distinctions between clean and unclean food, I believe, was God's way of demonstrating to uh, his people, to us today, that uh, we are entering into a relationship in which certain things are acceptable, certain things are not acceptable, and it is God himself that makes that decision in regards to uh, what we can and cannot participate in. It's not up to our fleshly appetites, so to speak. It's not up to what we want or what we crave, but what he desires. And he was calling them to be separate. Uh, they were to be like no other people on the face of the earth. Question number two, how did our Lord show that such distinctions are not binding and what constitutes defilement in God's sight? 
Well, I don't know really what this question is meaning by non-binding because uh, they have value. You couldn't just eat whatever you wanted to eat and get by with it, so it was binding in that sense. But I think it's probably getting to the point that uh, if you had accidental contact with these things or, or these these different foods or whatever, you were allowed to wash yourself for purification, wait just till evening. Uh, there was no need for a blood sacrifice for, for atonement for this. Uh, we also know that Jesus... Uh, said that it's not what goes into a man that makes him unclean it's what comes out of his heart and peter had the rooftop experience where he was told to kill and eat and not to call anything unclean uh, that god had made clean so i believe that's what this question uh, is getting at today uh, i hope you enjoyed this study uh, we're going to move on to bodily discharges and molds and mildews uh, in the next study god bless have a great day